Christopher Chalenz. I'm the director of the American Academy in Rome, and I'm very happy to welcome you all to the beginning of something really big here, and that is our Galileo Week. greco del cardinal Gonzaga, il signor Piffari, professore a Siena, ed altri otto. Alcuni vennero espressamente per compiere questa osservazione e pur restando sino a luna di notte non raggiunsero un accordo nelle loro opinioni. Roma, 16 aprile 1611. marzo 1611. Dopo un viaggio rimandato per mesi a causa della salute precaria, Galileo arriva finalmente nella città del Papa per presentare e promuovere la sua invenzione, il perspicillum, come lo chiamava lui stesso. esiste un unico centro di tutte le sfere celesti. 2. Il centro della Terra non è il centro dell'universo, ma solo della gravità e della sfera della Luna. 3. Tutte le sfere dei pianeti ruotano intorno al Sole, che è il centro dell'universo. 4. Rispetto alla distanza delle stelle fisse, la distanza tra la Terra e il Sole 
è trascurabile. 5. Il moto delle stelle fisse è apparente e deriva dal moto diurno della Terra che ruota attorno ai suoi poli. 6. Il moto del Sole è apparente e deriva dai moti diurno e annuale della Terra che ruota attorno al Sole come ogni altro pianeta. 7. Il moto retrogrado dei pianeti è apparente e deriva dal moto annuale della Terra. Galileo, uh, just a couple of years after this important night, um, put his, he had two daughters and a son, and he placed the girls in a convent near Florence. And at the time, they were 12 and 13 years old, and they wound up spending the rest of their lives in that place. But the older girl kept up a lifelong correspondence with her father. And she is my connection to Galileo because I had the pleasure of reading her letters in Italian, translating them into English, and using them as a way to tell Galileo's story. Most illustrious Lord Father, we are terribly saddened by the death of your cherished sister, our dear aunt. But our sorrow at losing her is as nothing compared to our concern for your sake. Because your suffering will be all the greater, sire, as truly you have no one else left in your world now that she, who could not have been more precious to you, has departed. And therefore we can only imagine how you sustain the severity of such a sudden and completely unexpected blow. And while I tell you that we share deeply in your grief, you would do well to draw even greater comfort from contemplating the general state of human misery, since we are, all of us, here on earth like strangers and wayfarers, who soon will be bound for our true homeland in heaven, where there is perfect happiness, and where we must hope that your sister's blessed soul has already gone. Thus, for the love of God, we pray you, sire, to be consoled and to put yourself in his hands, for, as you know so well, that is what he wants of you. To do otherwise would be to injure yourself and hurt us, too, because we lament grievously when we hear that you are burdened and troubled, as we have no other source of goodness in this world but you. I will say no more, except that with all our hearts we fervently pray the Lord to comfort you and be with you always, and we greet you dearly with our ardent love. From San Mateo, the 10th day of May, 1623, most affectionate daughter, Suor Maria Celeste.